tonight's been in the first book of Samuel, chapter, and I'm, I'm taking from the chapter 17, and basically the entire chapter, but I, I won't put us through the entire reading. I'll just pull out different scriptures. And, and this chapter has been with me for some months, and I just carry on. God's not done with me through in this chapter. And, and if you had the opportunity, like I did growing up in a family going to Sunday school, you'd be pretty, pretty familiar with this chapter. This is where David meets Goliath. And I love it in that for us as a creation, this is the point, this is the day in history where God pivots he, always, he knows the end from the beginning. He's planned it from the very beginning. But this was the day. This is the day that his master plan gets put into action. We, we know as we go, we've come from Christmas and we go into Easter. And at Christmas we, we, we celebrate, you know, unto us a, a child is born, unto us a king is given. But he shall be of the lineage of David. So this is, this is the day where God puts his plan into action, where he comes to earth as a man. This is not when, he's born, this is not when Jesus is born, but this is, this is the lineage of David. God pivots. And we see that Israel has lined itself up in battle against, Philist, against the Philistines. And verse 11, it says, When Saul and all Israel heard the words of the Philistine, they were dismayed and greatly afraid. See, the, they had raged up, they had, they had lined up. And we read in this chapter, it's now on the 40th day. And Jesse calls his son David. And David's been out in the field looking after the, the flocks and the herds. And he calls him in and, and he, he, he wants David to go to the front line and to hear how the brothers. And he says, carry these these, these dry grains and these ten loaves of bread for your brothers. And for the, the captain of the thousand, the, cap, the thousand that is over his brothers, take these ten cheeses. So I, I like that because, you know, the world still works the same way. You know, you always make sure the man in charge also gets, a, you know, it's Christmas, he gets a, a hamper or whatever, or whatever, or whatever, you know. The world hasn't changed much in, in that regard. So essentially, David has been put on the lunch run. He's been called in from the, from the paddock. He's out there, you know, watching the sheep. And, and, and Dad comes in and says, look, can you come and do a drink? I want you to take, up, take lunch up to your brothers. While you're there, give the man in charge, you know, Take these nice cheeses. It, it, it could bow well for the, your brothers. And then come back and let me know how it goes. So David goes there and as he's there, he hears Goliath, the son of Gath, the Goliath of Gath, taunt. He, he, each morning and night, he lays down the terms of the contracts, the terms of the battle. You know, you send out one person, I'm the one person, we go for it. If I win, you're our slaves. If you win, we're your slaves. All very the same. And see, the, the terms and the contracts was laid out. And what I find interesting and amazing, when, when God wants to do a work, he can hold it. Realistically, I wouldn't understand, if I was the Philistines, I would not understand why we were waiting 40 days. With that one a bigger guy, we could take these guys and be back home by lunchtime. But it's amazing how God holds it. God holds it. God holds the times and the seasons in his very hands. He is the creator. He's the creator of not just us, but he's also the creator of times and circumstances. Because it's about him. His, there is no other name. There's no other name but the name 
of Jesus. There's no other God but the God, and he is a jealous, true, and just God. And we see David arrives after leaving the lunch, and he leaves the, the, the goods with the, the, the guy who is in charge of looking after the goods. So that tells me David wouldn't have been the only one. He, it wasn't a rarity that David was going to see how his, brothers or how his brothers were going in battle because they had set someone aside to look after it. So he's not the only one going up there. And he turns up there on the battlefield and he hears, he hears it and it stirs him in his heart and he starts to turn to the other soldiers. What shall be done for he that removes the reproach from Israel? And they lay it down. You get the chick. And you don't get to pay taxes ever again. No GST, no transfer duties, no stamp duties, no death tax, no, no wage tax, no, just no tax, tax free. No taxes. It's amazing how that was an issue then and it's still an issue today. Who wants to be tax-free? We all do. And David, and he, and he turns to another one, he turns to another one, so he's actually challenging the other soldiers who worship the same God he worships. They read the same scriptures he reads. They, they're from the same people, the same God, the same everything, but there's a difference in the hearts. It says, Saul heard and was greatly afraid. And then his brothers hear him talking to the other soldiers. Insolent young man, who have you left looking after those? We know you just came up here to, to see what's going on. And eventually, the, the, the David's questioning, David's challenging, David's, David's bravo, bravo about him reaches King Saul. And of all the people on that battlefront that day, King Saul has the most to lose. Being the king of Israel, if they lose the battle, we know through history, it's not written here in the scripture, but we know through history, if they lost battle, the best case scenario, him, his wife, everybody is butchered. From the cat to the cook. Anyone associated with his name, his lineage is obliterated off the face of the planet. He has the most to lose. Worst case scenarios, they do that, eunuch him, and make him a court jester, where he spends the rest of his life being made fun of, dragged out through festivals and different things, and taunted and beaten and made, you know. That's the worst case scenario. And he, and he hears David, and David turns to Saul, and he goes, let no man's heart fear, for today the reproach of Israel will be removed. And Saul turns to David, and we see him, he puts the armor, he puts his armor on David, puts the helmet and all the other stuff, and, and David says, I can't move. We know when Saul, when, they, when the people of Israel picked Saul, we know he stood head and shoulders above everybody else. He, he was their choice. He was their champion. They knew, they knew him as their one a bigger guy. So Goliath was their one a bigger guy. And, and David puts it on and sees that God has an innate capacity to hold a situation. See, if this was on the first day of battle, the second day of the battle, even the seventh day of battle, David turning up and said, what shall be done? Is there not a cause? Is there not a cause? On the second day of battle, that falls on deaf ears. But on the 40th day of battle, when all the heart when, all, when, when everything feels lost, where the, God has even held the enemies from attacking for so long that they know death and destruction would be almost imminent. 
What shall be done for he that removes the reproach of Israel? And see, God has that ability to drop each and every one of us in that situation. If this was the second day of Dadel and David turned up, ha, go away. Someone will step up. Someone will step up. And often we get to invade people's lives and, and people's situation and it's not the first day. God, they, they're, they're going through the ringer and it's the 40th day because if you met them on the first day of their strife and you say, God's the answer here, it's go away. But on the 40th day of battle, on the 40th day of struggle, when people have sit there and face things, whether it's a sickness, a disease, a, a, a relationship breakdown, a challenge, whether it's physical or mental, or emotional, on the first day that battle, that challenge arrives, when you step in there with the word of God, it's still the truth. But maybe the answer to them is go away. But see, God is the God of the creator of time. And he has that ability that you turn up, not on the first day, not on the second day, but on the 40th day of battle. Where you turn up in that situation, bringing the great I am, the, the, the Christ that lives within you. Because it's no longer that you that lives, but the Christ that's in you. And what looked like a 16-year-old insolent, as Goliath described him, ruddy young boy, all of a sudden becomes the solution. See, see Glo uh, Dave, uh, Saul tried to put his anointing on David. Saul tried to put his helmet, his sword, his shield, his chainmail, his armor on David. David put it on, and, and quite often when we step out into ministry or we step into situations, we, set, we, we arrive in places, we see that God is the answer. We know the Christ that is in us, that Christ is the answer, and we straight away want to step into someone else's anointing because we think their anointing is better. But David said, I can't move. Goes down to the creek and picks up five rocks. Why five? I don't know. I wasn't there. I'm old, but I'm not that old. Some people say Goliath had four brothers. Oh, I don't know. Maybe he did. But see, David went down to the stream and picked up the rocks because you know what? He stood in his anointing. Not only his anointing, his gift. Here is a young shepherd boy. And guess what? He wasn't a member on Instagram. Or X. Or Facebook. There was no PlayStation. No TV. No newspaper. I'm pretty sure young David, when he was out in that paddock with his slingshot, was shooting every little bird, every little rabbit, little, every little rock that he possibly could. Because I think when he killed the bear and he killed the lion, it was not his first shot and his second shot. That was his 100,000th shot, his 200,000th shot, his 250,000th shot. So he stood against Goliath, not with just a streak, he stood up with Goliath with what he knew with his gifts, his talents, his muscle memory, his skills. And God will drop you into places and situations with that exact same equipment. When God puts you in a situation, it's not about turning around to see what would such and such do. If God's got you in that situation, that plane and that, that time and that place and that existence, it is to put what you know and what you know how to do. If that's bake a cake, bake a cake. If that's change spark plugs, change spark plugs. If that's sweep a floor, sweep a floor. If that's listen, listen. Because it's not the first day of battle. It's the 40th day of battle. And he's put you in there for your gifts, your talents. David went to the front line to deliver lunch. Unto us, a child is born. Unto us, a king is given and he shall be of the lineage of 
David. On a lunch run. He's doing a Macca's run. Swung by uh, Subway. Went through the drive through got some coffee. A cupcake. Maybe day-old donuts. Oh, I don't know. It's a lunch run. And see, that's God's ability, and that's what God calls us. And, and this is what he's been speaking to me, and I hope it speaks to you so much. It's you've got to get out of someone else's anointing. You know, the trials, the tribulations, the struggles that you've been through is exactly the, the workout that God wants to use in your time, in your situation, and it could change the history of mankind at very least someone's eternity. And do not despise where and when. David went to deliver lunch. Unto us a child is born, unto us a king is given, and he is of the lineage of David. It started with a Macca's run. And we have our salvation. Amen? I bring up some pictures. Bring up some. There's a blast from the past. First missions trips from this church. Hey, this is 20, probably 26 years ago. We had longer hair back then, and it was all on the top. Now we have hair in other places, out of your ears, out of your nose, and all sorts of places. Life's changed. We used to take photos with a camera, put it in a film, and we carry that film around countries, around the world, around continents. On the plane trip home, you'd get the sick bag, which had a discount voucher printed on the sick bag. Make sure there was no sick in the sick bag. Throw all your 40 rolls of film into the bag, and you'd post it off, and they'd tell you this is going to be $9,754 to print. What? Here's a kidney. And you get 500 photos, four of them, 400 of them of your finger. 30 of them blurry, and about six that are usable. I'll bring up the next picture. Life's changed, eh? When we first went, we even from the church, I think it was, I don't know, it was Mackay State High School or something like that, we carried a dart, a well, reel-to-reel projector, the old bell and owl, we used to call them old bells. As they were fun was not the word we would use to describe them. And we turned up in the middle of a, on the highway, just on the highway. And there's the highway that runs north to south. It's the same highway you would call Cape to Cairo. Cape down to Cairo, we're 100 metres off that road in a small village and we set up and we put up a little camping gear in the, under the stars and we showed the Jesus film on the old reel-to-reel, four reels, we preached the gospel, we sung a few songs and we, at the end we called people to come forth for salvation and they came out. It was amazing. And after we prayed for salvation, we asked the people that if those that are sick stand, stand on this side, those that are demon-possessed stand that side, and we're sitting there watching, and they said, no, go pray for them. We went and we prayed for them, and people got healed, and people got set free of di- uh, demons. 2023, we're out alongside the highway, preaching the gospel. Asking people and hundreds of people were responding to the gospel. And after they responded to the gospel, he said, if you're sick, come stand here. And they stand there, and those that are demon-possessed stand there. We, we pray for them, and you know what? They get healed. They get saved, because the gospel hasn't changed. 25 years ago, we went there to preach the gospel. 25 years later, we're still preaching the gospel. People are still getting healed. People are still getting saved. People are still getting set free from diamonds because God hasn't changed. He's the same yesterday, today, tomorrow. 
His heart and his passion and his love is for the lost. We bring up the next time. 2006, church here was rung. Uh, it was for a lady named, her surname was Armson, who was the sister to my home economics teacher in Tully. Go figure that out. Talk about lunch runs and don't know what happened. So what the sister of my home economics teacher was doing with the phone number for a church in Mackay, go figure. But you know, it's not the first day of battle. It's the 40th day of battle. And God's got this amazing ability just to hold the enemy so that his name be lifted up. Because it's not the battle. It's about the God who's in the battle. We get a phone call. We've got some medical gear sitting under the tree over here at the McCoy Base Hospital. Do you want it? I asked again. We're evangelists. We preach the gospel. That's what we do. So it's not what we do, but I'll ask. We asked. People at church tried to fly over the table and give me a kiss. Simple yes, we'll emphasize, you know, just yes, no. We don't have to get emotional here. It's 2006. 30-something containers later, and we're still invading people's lives through, through medical equipment, you know. It's, it, it's common amongst us, you know. Medicine treats, Jesus heals. I've said it time and time again, whether you're invading someone's life because they got crushed between two trucks uh, crossing a railway line and you, you need a wheelchair because you have no legs or one leg anyway, you have bits and pieces whether it's crushes because you've lost a leg and, or you're invading just invading people's lives, the opportunity to be Christ or, or you send a wheelchair down into a valley where we go hunting and, and the young girl receives the wheelchair and from the day she receives the wheelchair she begins to start to walk Within a month of receiving a wheelchair, never walked a day in her life. She's now walking. It's not what we do, God. But I'll ask. And so often we, we, we get put into situations. We can be so busy about doing what we've always done and always will be doing and because God doesn't change and, and his heart's still of the gospel, but just sometimes he just wants to tweak it a little bit. Sometimes he just wants to push you a little bit. David had to not kill the bear or, or, or the lion with a stone. He had to kill a man. But it was still his gift set. It was still his muscle memory. It was still within his capacity. He had to stand away from someone else's, someone else's anointing and stand in the anointing that God had given him. Bring up the next tour. Because that is what it's about. Sunday. The team preaches the gospel. Lay the hands on the sick, cast out demons. Monday morning, hospital beds are empty. It's not what we do, God. But I ask. It might be just something God wants to do. We're in multiple, I don't know how many. See, one thing, one of the, one of the, one of the beautiful things that came out of uh, the, the separation and the divorce which, which tried to break everything down with COVID was the, med, the doctors and the nurses got put into a position that they had to, they, they were relying on medicine. The chaplains were removed from their arsenal. And it was difficult. And when everything lifted and the chaplains came in and, and, and hospital beds began to end, empty, it, a, a fresh revelation of this job is so much easier with Jesus. This is so much easier when people get healed. It's so much cheaper 
on the health department, faster on the health department, if Jesus can come in and do it for us. A couple of years back, I got an email from Hong Kong. I don't know anyone in Hong Kong. I've traveled through Hong Kong. I've been to Hong Kong airport once or twice, three times now. Can't say I know anyone in Hong Kong, though. Some organization in Hong Kong says, would you like to have 300 sewing machines? You're not related to the guy in Nigeria that was the has that fortune that's, and I'm the sole relative, Are you cousins by any chance? I can smell a rat. And rats have a particular smell. Like snakes, dead snakes, stink, 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 dead snakes. You ever smell a dead snake? Oh. Like a cabbage. Rotten cabbages and rotten snakes, two smells you don't want. Anyway, one thing led to another. Oh, sewing machines. Ah, uh, look, it's not what we do, but I'll ask <laughs> whether they're going into a hospital slash prison for mentally ill people where one of the, the warders actually happens to be a fully trained tailor can use the ladies and part of the rehabilitation and make uniforms for everybody. Or they could end up in a, an orphanage where you can see some of the wares out the back where people have that, or they end up in a young girl's hand who goes to church and who has a passion for fashion and has just worn out her mother's, the neighbor's machine, I don't know, but just here. Yeah like David New Rocks, you know sewing machines. Or, or, or in a village or in a, in a refugee camp where churches have been planted, leaders have been raised up, where, where people are going in there and, and then all of a sudden they just start bringing communities, start bringing, bringing training, bringing purpose, bringing, bringing, bringing future and making, you know, getting contracts to make uniforms, contracts to do this, where they're, they're no longer refugees, they're settled, they're, they're, new, they're new, new citizens. And it's such, a, 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 such a, an impact that the, the organisation, Emmett, comes and, comes and says, you know, we're just, we're just blown away by what's happened there in the northern of Zambia. Would you, would you be willing, if in your next lot you've got f five, would you have, would you have five, would, 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 you, would, you, would you, would you please maybe kind of have five, or is five, is, will we be a bit rude, can I be asked for five machines? We'll take them to a refugee camp in Zimbabwe for Mozambique. No, you cannot have five because there's 11,000, 14,000 people there, so you're ridiculous with five. I think you need 25. So the answer to is no for five, but yes to 25. Come on, you're not picking five rocks up like David. Five's a bit low, lift, lift, lift you higher. Or, or whether it's a, uh, a young guy at the, the, the autism centre, you know, his, not so many years ago, he would be locked up in the house while his mum would go to the market and sell charcoal and different things to help main, make, make ends meet. And had no idea, no, no plan, no future, had, had absolutely, absolutely no idea what, what future would hold, but because she was embarrassed and didn't know what was wrong and the best thing I can do is just lock him up and then go, go work in a market. Come home and find him just sweating or, you know, just, oh, no, an absolute mess. But now you go to the, the center in here. What's going on? Oh, I've got another contract. They've asked me, the, 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 the tailor's asked me to stitch these uniforms. 
every day, every day, every day. God, it's not what we do. It's what I'll ask. Is there not a cause? David was on a lunch run. Heard. Heard the defilement. What shall be done? What shall be done for he who removes the reproach from Israel? What shall be done for you as you bring the word of God? What shall be done for you who, who, who brings the answer to that situation? Because I can challenge you now, I know it's not the first day of battle, but it will always be the fourth. Because it's not about you, it's about the God that's in you and that his name be lifted up and he shall draw all men unto him. We'll bring up the next time. Uh, Emmett again. I need, they need to lose my number. Emmett again. Oh, we got a situation. Oh, yeah. We've got 134 people slowly starving to death. Okay. Where are they? Uh, they're in a prison. See, the situation is they're in a mental prison. So the health department says it's the prison's job because the prisons. But the prison says it's the health department's job because they're mental patients. So it would end up being nobody's job. And they were living on a diet of uh, sump, which is cracked white corn. Americans call it grits few other places cook it up a different way. And then you would cook it, you boil it. So you either boil it with the cockroaches if it had the cockroaches, if it had beetles, you boil it with the beetles, if it had neither cockroaches nor beetles nor weevils, you just had a plant. So we will have that breakfast, lunch and dinner, boiled, boiled or boiled. So essentially the nutritional standard was not great. So we've partnered with them over two years and we've seen great testing. Tough crowd. Some of those people there, they are next level. They are prisoners. And there's a reason they're prisoners. Why, God? Why? I love them. I love them. What's the end game here? You know, they're going to be free. They're going to become mentally ill. What's the end game here, God? What's the end game here? God, show me your plan. Just love them. Just love them. Sometimes it can be just that simple. Maybe you don't need to know the end game. Maybe your job is just the love. That's enough because that's what God's asked you to do. It's not about what will come. I have. But they love it. They ask, when are they coming? Are they coming on Wednesday? Is today Wednesday? Yes, it is Wednesday, but it's not this Wednesday. Are they coming today? We've already discussed this next week. What day next week? Wednesday. Is today Wednesday? No, today's not Wednesday. Well, today is Wednesday, but it's not this Wednesday. Bring up the next. Whether you're then invading people's lives, whether it's a, a lady that turns up to the hospital heavily pregnant, demanding an abortion. Husband's just got up and left, took everything with him. She basically has what she's standing up in. See, the doctors know it's a lot easier to do with God than it is with just medicine. Call the chaplain. Anyway, we have cots and nappies and baby clothes and, you know, I don't, some of the stuff that God arranges to put in his containers, it's only God that knows. My job's not to know what it's for. My job is just to unpack it. Say, well, God, where's this going? 
this is going to this lady. And that, you can also give her a couple of hundred pairs of shoes where she can be discipled in starting a business. These will be capital. And then after she raises capital, she can do what she knows best. She can stick with her skill set. She can sell charcoal. Gives her a cash flow daily. Sells something that people buy daily, twice daily, three times daily. Gives it a quick turnaround. Good profit. Often, multiple times a day. It'll allow her to make ends meet as she needs to make ends meet and sell a product that is easy to store, has no shelf life, and, and uh, has all shelf life, and she can make ends meet. So I don't have the plan, but God does. Yeah, going uh, into a, a, a refugee camp and putting san washable sanitary pads into the hands of, uh, of the young schoolgirls uh, so they don't miss school, whether you do that across the country, across a town, across a city, across, across a nation, or whether you're putting thongs, you know, $36 thongs and, uh, uh, into a, a young missionary's hands who's setting up a mission station in, in a village where there is no church, and you sit there and go, well, here's a couple of hundred pairs of thongs, raise some money, buy a boat, buy a fishing net, live a disciple's life amongst fishermen and disciple fishermen. David went to deliver lunch. Unto us, a child is born. Unto us, the king is given. Phone can ring any time with anything. You know, next up, we've got to move equivalent of a container and a half of, must be hundreds, thousands of washable sanitary pads, uh, underpants. There's a team of ladies with sewing machines. Someone has a shed about this size and it's just full. And every week they have an outreach to other ladies and they're on their sewing machines. And these aren't little homemade machines. These are the, these are the, 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 the F1 machines. They've got a cutter that can cut, you know, wads of material. Like, it's like a factory. It's like a sweatshop for 65-year-olds with a heart and a passion to change the world. One washable sanitary pad at a time. Why not? Why not? You have to take someone else's anointing on and put your soul machine anointing on and put it in gear. And then partners and people turn up, ah, oh, it's tons. It's tons and tons and tons and tons and tons. It's in the order of thousands. God's powerful. God's extravagant. But you've just got to put off someone else's anointing. Go pick up your own rocks. Do what you're good at. Because God wants you to use it. Next picture. Caleb Center. Finish up here very shortly. Worship. A couple of years ago, I shared on this. We started. We did not know what we're doing. Not a clue. You know, asked to be on the board of autism. First question is, what is autism? Usually, if you're going to start a board of autism, pick people that know something about autism. I googled it. Looked at some of the characteristics of people who are autistic. Don't do well socially. Don't have it to, you know, you start going through it and you think, hmm, I'm autistic. <laughs> who knew? Just got diagnosed by Auntie Google. Pick me. Apparently I'm an expert and didn't know it. And it can break you. Now we started off and we went in one meeting, we went from, do you want to be in the board of realtorism to we should hire a place and start. With what, dear Eliza? With what? The bucket? The bucket doesn't have a hole, we don't even have a bucket. If we had a bucket with a hole, that'd be a start. We got nothing. Couldn't he? 
I struggled at one point to raise, what was it, $19 or seven? Under 20 bucks to buy a tin of paint. Because the place that we got was basically condemned, and that's why no one else would rent it. So we held, to get, we held it together with paint, as you do. Because if you can't see the problem, the problem doesn't exist. <laughs> that's man logic right there, people. And it was working. You know, we had people volunteering their time, but we said, no, when have we got money? We didn't have a clue. Someone said, you need to, to raise funds and to make a difference on the level that you need to make a difference on. You need to have a strategic plan. What's a strategic plan? Google, what is a strategic plan? Shivers. Sounds like hard work. What? Oh, shit. Okay, Google. What is a strategic plan for autism? Anyway, 115 pages later, there's the national, national strategic plan for autism. Written by a prawn farmer from Hill Bilby. Well, no one else was doing it. Add some data, copy and paste, print her up. Find it, there you go, very official. Look to the part. Don't ask me what it says. What didn't look good got cut, what looked good got pasted. Does it make sense? I'm still trying to work out what autism is and I'm pretty sure I'm autistic. So anyway, let's fly under that. But you can break. Nearly broke me. Bring up the next car. Nelly who is the mother of Caleb Hoover Centre, is named after Caleb Centre. She's the one in the David Jones outfit. Uh, people of a certain age giggle. Hey, you have to be of an age to know what I'm talking about, don't you? It's out there with film and a camera. Alongside her is the, the wife to the president of the current wife, uh, current, the wife to the president who's currently sitting. On, our, on my 50th birthday, uh, we went for a little trip to East Africa and as we were about to board a plane a message came in on the phone to the ch WhatsApp chat group for the people who were the board saying Matinta Akachilemba, the, the president's wife wants to visit the Caleb Centre I think it was Tuesday or Thursday and it's like Monday so I turned to Ange because Ange, Ange has a in advance business. And she said, oh, I said, oh, Ange, I bet you we're going to be asked for tent and chairs and deco and all that type of stuff. So we get on one plane, we get off the other plane because we're in flight mode and turn the flight mode off. And bing, 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 bing. There you go. You'll know better than me. So anyway, she came. See, Nellie's walk. Nellie's journey. She, she was a mother. And her son, Caleb, was, he'd walk on his toes and there were issues. Uh, so she went to the hospital and says, something's wrong. Hospital, okay, we don't know, but here's a referral. She went there and we don't know, here's a referral. We don't know, here's a referral. We don't know, here's a referral. And she's sitting in a doctor's office with the Earl and with, the, with Caleb and, uh, and then a, a group of doctors basically walking by and stops and asks and asks some questions, picks up the referral. He says, oh, it's very simple. The son is autistic. Here's your referral. Well, okay. Autistic. Nurse. Excuse me, nurse. What's autistic? I don't know, ask the doctor, type of thing. She turns back up to church and she's probably done, I don't know, she probably did a Google thing and she's sitting in church. She's looking around the church. She looks at this person and says, well, I'll ask that one. She goes, and I'll ask that one. And I'll ask that one. And I'll ask that one. And they 
like we're having a meeting at my office and people from church start turning up. And I'm thinking, is this a meeting or we're having a home group meeting? Hi, Sydney. Hi. 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 You guys want to be on the board for autism? Yeah. Okay. What's autism? All of us. But see, in only a way a mother could, something's not right. I need to find the answer. Now I know what it is, what do I do? How do I, how do I fix this situation? How do I deal with the situation? How, how do I deal it with me? How do I deal it for others? This is, when, when we struggle, you know, we, we would truly and honestly making it up as we went along. Not a clue. Happy to prove, happy to say, happy to testify in court no matter what happens. Not a, not a foggiest of what to do. But we gave it a red hot go. The president's wife turns up. This is going to be my project. I've arranged for the council, they are giving you this land here, it's about five acres. We're going to build a school, we're going to build a treatment centre, we're going to build an administration block, we're going to do this, we're going to do that, the teachers will be employed by government. This now becomes a national issue, a national focus, and I will make sure it happens. Six months earlier, couldn't raise 20 bucks. Couldn't raise 20 bucks to paint a, for a tin of paint. The wife to the man in charge, the one that can get in his ear and turn his head, you know, we know all that, can turn his head. The one who says, I want this, it happens. Says, no longer. No longer. We have to make a change here. And see, that's the beauty of God. From a mother who's a school teacher, who just wouldn't let go, would not re refuse to let go until someone told her what was wrong. And then not only refused to, to once she knew it was wrong, now, in a way, only a mother can do, only a mother can do, well, this is not right. We've got to change this. We're not only going to change it for me, we're going to change it for everybody. Where we're not just impacting our town, our province, but our country. And she has the capacity to get into the ears of other first ladies where we see the potential, not just to change it for Zambia, but she can lead the way to change it for a continent of 1.2 billion people. David delivered lunch. Nelly just pushed to get her done. And she turned around to her friends, her, her brothers and sisters in the Lord in the church and said, will you help? Will you be a part? Will you be the part and start something great? There's going to be a lot of tears, there's going to be a lot of sweat. <laughs> it may break you. the 40th day of battle and on the first day would have looked absolutely ridiculous six people from a church wanting to transform a continent on the first day it was ridiculous on the 40th day, day of battle let no man's heart fear Nelly has been around a large number of 
African countries. And she gets to testify of the greatness of a God and the ability just to hang on. She's talking to parents about solutions, both surgically and other solutions for autism. But the mother of an autistic child is a school teacher crossing Africa. Bring up that last time. In the last verse of that chapter, and it says, And Saul said to him, Whose son are you, young man? So David said, answered, I am the son of your servant Jesse, the Bethlehemite. And that's then one of the more important questions in this chapter. Whose son are you? Which house of God are you found? Where, where do your roots lie? We see here in history, I'm pretty sure Saul, being a good Israelite, would have known the prophecies. Would have known the prophecies that, 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 that Christ would be born of a lineage of Bethlehemites. But he asks, who's That's why it's important to be a heart, be a part and belong for our, our story. Our, our answer to that is very simple. We are from Mackay. We are from the, the church. It was COC Mackay then. We, we can tell you who started the church, who took it over. We can, we can tell you every, every line of lineage because that is the son of who. Amen.